Hello there and welcome to the Irish Film London podcast. This week we are going to go back to one of our festival events, our most recent St. Patrick's Day Festival. We hosted an event with Spotlight Membership Engagement Executive Mel Brown and actors Tony O'Rourke and Aola Smart. Tony O'Rourke is best known for her roles in Camp Horses and Cardboard Gangsters, and Aola has starred in Killing Eve and Juliet Naked. In this podcast, we chat about all things self-taping and also how we're going to emerge back into the entertainment business after a long time in lockdown. Once again, I'm joined here with Jerry Maguire, the head of Irish Film London. How are you, Jerry? I'm all right, Nave. Thanks very much. How's you? Good, thank you. How has your past few weeks been since our last catch up all things film and tv it's been busy as usual but one of the really nice things is that we've been able to actually arrange and start to publicize uh wait for it actual in-person live cinema event no which is like i don't know how to tell you how excited i am about this but I've been working for Irish Film London since January this year, and we've done loads of online stuff, as you know, but this is the first time that we're actually able to get people into a bricks and mortar building and watch a film that's actually projected onto a screen. And I'm very, very, very excited. So in the London Irish Centre in Camden on the 9th of July, we're doing a really special and quite intimate screening of a film by a documentarian called Loic Jordan, um, who's based in Donegal, and his film, The Tribe of Gods, uh, was a Galway film flat in 2020. And we've been in touch with Loic, and we're going to bring his film over to the Camden Irish Centre and screen it to a small wee audience there. Now, it was a bit a bit touch and go on this, Neve, because we, we wanted to show this to an increased audience when the... Um, like the the regulations around social distancing were meant to have been relaxed last month um, and we sort of hemmed and hawed about whether or not we would go ahead with the event when they weren't relaxed at that time but we decided to go ahead with it anyway and we're doing a screening for 20 people which is really 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 intimate like you can't get much more intimate than that and it's one of these events where you know you're gonna have to sit down and stay sat down and there's There'll be a bar, but it's table service only and everything. And, you know, it's, it, it's a difficult circumstance to do it in. But I think we've decided that it's more worth doing it than not doing it. Absolutely. And I think it's like that. It's just about adapting and we're very resilient. So why not start small? And then hopefully, especially by our festival in November, we'll be back in full swing. Totally. So are there tickets still available or what's going on with it at the moment? At the time of us recording, I think that most of our tickets are allocated, but what we're, we're, we're just, we're really aware that people's plans change so much these days. So what we're, what we've done today is we've stuck up a little reserve list on the, on the ticket website. Um, if you search for the tribe of gods on Eventbrite, and we've chose to put it on Eventbrite because it's a, an event that we're partnering with Conrad Nagelica in London. We're partnering with them on it um, and with London Irish Centre. So it's up on Eventbrite rather than any one of our ticketing platforms. Um, and the reason we're, we've, we've got it up there is because we can manage a wee reserve list so that if people's plans change and they decide, actually, do you know what? I can't come down on that Friday evening. We can release that ticket back to someone on the reserve list. So, if you go on and you see that the main allocation is sold out, do not, do not worry. Put your name on the reserve list, and we will get back in touch with you if, if something comes up. Oh, um, fantastic! That's so exciting. Yeah, but it should be it should be fun. Like Loic was going to come over and and join us in London. Had the restrictions been lifted, that's now an online Q and A session that we're going to do via Zoom. Um, our partnership with Conor and Gaelica is it's important for them that because it's an Irish language film that there's an opportunity for people to practice their Irish as well. So there's a wee pop-up Gale Talk uh, event that we're doing thereafter at the tables. And, you know, if, if that's if that's successful and people want to join, we can we can take our pop-up Gale Talk out to another bar thereafter. Like so Definitely. we can that's your just, Irish Jerry. Uh Neil Hickam. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do, that'll do, that'll do. Yeah, it's um, it's not as bad as it's not as good as it would be if I had have been listening in third year in St. Michael's. 
sorry. Well, I think actually the London Irish Centre do offer um, Irish classes. So if anyone does want to brush up, definitely have a look into those. Um, another thing, not necessarily as exciting as that, um, live event wise, but I went to see Supernova in the Lighthouse Cinema here in Dublin. And two things were a really nice surprise. I walked towards the Lighthouse and they were currently filming um, Conversation with Friends at the time, mm. which was quite cool to see. If you see my little head in the background, you'll know I made the cut. And also uh, the Lighthouse were, was doing a Wolf Walkers exhibition, which was such a little treat ah. and a gorgeous surprise. So they no. had all of their sketches and some of their prints and then some of their kind of final storyboards. And yes, I've seen pictures of this. It looks really, really nice. Really beautiful. And I think like if it really kind of finishes the day off, if you're going to go and see Wolf Walkers, you can go and see it in the lighthouse if you're in Dublin. And uh, and just to have to have the exhibition there was was really lovely. Isn't that such a beautiful thing as well to have an exhibition of of any film, really? Like it's just so special to have to have the ability to to be able to communicate with people across like multiple art forms i guess multiple mediums or platforms or whatever you want to call it like i mean it's hopefully most people who are listening to this podcast are aware of wolf walkers and are aware of its like award success and its critical acclaim and all that kind of stuff but you know during lockdown most people may not have had a chance to see it in the cinema so not only is there a chance to get in there and see it now and see this like really wonderful irish animation from an, from like a world-class animation studio but then to be able to sit and sort of I don't know contemplate a little bit afterwards in a gallery context that's that sounds really nice exactly and I think Wolf Walkers seem to really um kind of go across all ages like I've I've heard oh, yeah. raving about it and adults and, and and everything it really kind of is for everyone I think everyone who goes to see it gets something out of it so if you haven't watched it, definitely do try and seek it out because it's a, it's it's an absolute gem. But is there another film release that's coming out as well? One of our friends, Kathy Brady, her film Wildfire is getting a big release, isn't it? That's soon? right. Yeah. So the big release date in the UK, I think, is in September. But there's been some preview screenings taking place in London this last fortnight. And uh, our friends from Film Network Ireland were across and interviewed Kathy and Nora Jane Noon. Um, and they have a podcast episode out this week, actually, which is in partnership with Irish Film London. And we encourage everyone to go and check that out and have a listen. Uh, great interview. Uh, Remy, the host there, is a really, really great interviewer and really knows what she's talking about. Um, so everyone should have, try and hunt that out on the film network ireland channels and have a listen and consider putting wildfire in your diaries for its september release amazing and to kind of wrap it up is there any tv little gems that we should be looking out for or looking forward to well i'm glad you asked me that neve because i was very interested to open up netflix the other evening and see that um the new mini series i think it's a limited series um called sophie a murder in west cork is up there now and i've been i've been anticipating it a little bit it's um the story of sophie toscan de plantier who some people my age or older will remember was um the victim of of a, a really high profile murder case in west cork about 25 years ago um and there was oh there was a media circus around it like obviously nothing like that had ever happened in that part of the world before um but the director of that documentary series is a guy called john bauer i think is his name and it's really interesting that for me john is somebody who comes from um like he's got a really he's got a really great cv basically as a filmmaker but one of the recent projects that he made was a documentary series for hbo max which was about the story of db cooper and that's mm -hmm. for any like murder mystery fans that's kind of like the ultimate murder mystery in the u.s yeah. um and it's i think it's quite interesting that john is the person who's directed this this irish story about this yeah. like this irish case as well so i'm keen to see what he's done with it 
Definitely. Really looking forward to that. Another thing I did forget was that I had another trip to the cinema and I brought my dad for Father's Day um, to oh. Conjuring. So <laughs> your typical Father's Day. I was going to give you a big, oh, that was nice. But like, yeah. oh, oh. <laughs> He's the only person that would come uh, come with me to it. But um, the lead role in The Conjuring is played by Rory O'Connor, who is an Irish actor now emerging. He studied in the Lear and it was really cool mm. to see him kind of in a big blockbuster Hollywood film. Uh, if you are a horror fan, I would recommend. I mean, I quite like The Conjuring kind of um, series. I think they, they do it quite well, but uh, it's definitely... Um, very jumpy i have to say okay so you be prepared okay good stuff good stuff amazing jerry well thank you so much for joining me for a chat before this podcast and i hope our listeners enjoy and we will see you all very soon thanks jerry see you all soon bye and am i right in saying now that because i know definitely here in the spotlight in ireland that you have um, an opportunity to rent a room, obviously when things open back up again, to shoot your tapes, you know, if you're, you're kind of living with loads of people or you don't have that playing background or that kind of stuff, but Spotlight does have that facility as well. We do have that facility. It's something that you do have to, to pay for, but it is very professional and you um, have a reader and a cameraman, um, well, the same people, but the, um, they um, obviously will help you in terms of that self-tape. We have a lot of actors come in who, um, you know, just want to work on stuff and have a few um, takes and just give it a different kind of spin to it. So they do um, obviously lockdown at the moment that tends not to be happening but I think probably from April April the 12th that kind of date is when we'll be able to get more into the actual studios um, and be able to kind of offer those kind of services again so um, yeah questions at spotlight.com if you have you know if you want to have more information about the prices and, and what actually is offered in those sessions just drop them a line and they'll be able to kind of give you some, some detailed information but it is helpful if especially a, a lot of people do it around um, um, kind of pilot season or something or if they've got as you say quite a, a big audition that they want to really put their heart and soul in um, time then to do it so it's something to consider definitely no it's a really great uh, facility to, to avail of um, I'm going to bring in our two actors now as well um, Aola and Tony I wanted to ask Aola you know, some people, some actors love self-tapes because, like, there's so many pros and cons to both, but some actors kind of love it because it's a chance to, you know, you could do as many takes as you like, you know, you can take a breath if you need, all that kind of stuff. Um, but then also, you know, sometimes nothing beats just going into a room, feeling that energy, doing it, you know, and, and also kind of getting to show your personality. I know that's one thing I really miss about about kind of in-person auditions, you know, getting to have that little chat before or after. Um, yeah, what's how do you what's your kind of relationship to uh, to self tapes? Yeah, um, kind of as you said, there's pros and cons to both, really. Um, I mean, sometimes it's great that you can do as many takes as you want, and other times it's like two hours later, and you really just need to just stop. Um, <laughs> And I think I, I think one of the things I love most about in-person auditions um, is the immediate feedback and the ability to uh, play off each other and to be redirected or have another go in the room. And I guess with self tapes, it kind of limits that. And what you send is, you know, it's is what they see. And there's no opportunity to be like, oh, I really like that, but why don't you try it like this kind of thing, um, which I think you know is is needed and is, is helpful because you could be perfect but you've just gone in on just the wrong note a little bit um but I do like self-tapes I think yeah there's there's freedom there and you can kind of get into it and explore a bit more maybe and if you're reading with someone that you're comfortable with there's um room to have a lot of fun but um I don't know if I prefer one over the other I think yeah they definitely they nearly feel like two completely they are two completely uh, different experiences yeah sure. and Tony would you um like when Ayola was saying there you know like with the pros and cons I know for me 
I kind of get that buzz off going in um, to a physical audition and you're kind of thinking about your lines and what you're going to say and all that kind of stuff. But then when you're at home doing your tapes, you're also kind of in the back of your mind thinking, is my battery going to go? You know, are the light, is the lighting okay? Are the volume levels okay? You know, how do you kind of focus yourself when you're, when you're getting into the zone? Yeah, I think for me with tapes, I have a few kind of rules like because I I try to be as prepared for a tape as I would be going into the room just because at the end of the day it is free work as well so we need to also value ourselves and our time and if you are prepared you'll get through it and it will be an easy enough experience and in terms of giving yourself loads of takes and stuff like that I'm like, okay, no, if, if, if it's not, if it's not working, it's not working. And I, you have to throw it away and either I come back to it the next day, or I actually sometimes there's been once or twice where I've gone, the reason I'm not getting this is because I don't love it. I don't have the growl for it as much as a different tape. There's certain tapes come in and you like, from the second they arrive, you're like, okay, this is the one I'm so excited you get to work on it, you're excited to work on it, and then you do it, and it's great. And it's from start to finish, it's really smooth. And I always just, when you get that feeling, you can't really, you know when you don't have it. So yeah, you were. I'm definitely stressed about the mic and battery and getting it sent off and deadlines, which are always 11 a.m. I just don't understand. <laughs> it's just like, it's that, that. Anyway, it's the magic number. And so I guess being prepared beforehand allows you to not have to worry about that. Having me, I live with actors. So after everyone does a tape, it's kind of like house rules. You, you charge the camera as soon as you're finished for those reasons. But of course, there's times where you come to it and it hasn't been charged. You just have to let that be. Whatever will be, will be. And you've got to go with the flow with it. I think sometimes we get too in our heads about these things, rightfully. I mean, there's a lot riding on it rent livelihood of course but in that moment I think it's important for us to just kind of step back take a deep breath and just realize that the bigger picture is important definitely and sometimes I think because you have so much control over the self-tapes actually that is a nice little kind of nugget of the idea of maybe going away from it for a few hours or the next day and coming back to it because sometimes just doing it over and over and over again or different ways whatever it just gets completely blurred um, and yeah. and with the idea of like Ayala when you were saying there that you know when you're in the room you can get feedback or let's try it this way or let's try it that way have um and this is for Ayala and Tony have you ever sent um and not been asked but sent the same scene to kind of completely different ways you know to kind of show um range or have you just kind of gone for what they've wanted and then if they want something you hope they come back to to give you notes kind of thing um yeah I have uh personally I think it you know it depends on what it is and it depends on the scene and I you know I think if there's a clear way that something can go um then why not like why wouldn't you give yourself the best chance and send things like I wouldn't send in five versions but um like <laughs> like to I think yeah it's it's you may why not I would say like why wouldn't you yeah yeah I agree I think it's also a conversation that's to be had between say if you're in direct contact with your agent or the casting director and um, sometimes they'll like you said they need like they'll specify or sometimes they won't and I think um there are yeah exactly that there are moments where you can see where the scene could go and there's there's various different so why not and have that conversation being like look like sometimes I'll get a tape and it'll be in an accent and I'll read it and I'll be like oh why can't this why can't she be Irish though like that would be a bit of crack or whatever and so I'll have that conversation and be like look I'll do I'll do it in the accent but here it is in Irish as well and also that changes the flow the rhythm the character majorly so it, it's another opportunity to show how you it can be done absolutely because it's another kind of added subconscious added pressure on your brain while you're really while you're saying the lines instead of listening to the reader or mm. you know, really listening to what you're saying you're thinking about oh did, did that sound awful or did that whatever so yeah. It's actually, yeah that's a really lovely kind of thing as well to maybe just send off 
it in your accent because I mean if you get the part you can always work on the accent yeah exactly get a coach you know so actually yeah that is a lovely kind of uh thing to also just add into the mix why not kind of thing and Mel do you have any uh, like have you had any feedback from casting directors or anyone in the industry about kind of like that getting people kind of sending too many takes or not enough or you know not experimenting enough maybe I think sometimes as well if you go into the room I know I know I kind of feel a bit bolder I kind of feel like I could make a snap decision on the spot or whatever whereas I feel with self-tape sometimes you kind of just go on the brief that you're given you know mm -hmm. I think I think an, a, a golden rule to remember, especially in all of this kind of industry, is that every casting director um, has a slightly different way of working. And I think that is something that's so important when you get the instructions for a self tape. There might just be something so small, but this casting director wants that instead of you know what you kind of have done in the past. So obviously just making sure that you've read it all through. Um, I know that with IDENT, some people want you to have just a little chat, you know, and say, I don't know a random fact, fact about yourself you know one of those things that you absolutely dread when you go into like team building exercises or like tell me a joke or whatever it might be and you think no um obviously the eye don't need to make there to show you kind of your personality and obviously they're trying to kind of in this time where it's you know you can't um meet face to face I, I do get what they're trying to do sometimes but it must be I always think you know that's a really tricky thing to do because you're trying to show you and your personality and then you overthink it like is it quirky enough is it you know have I, do I sound really silly do I sound really fun like what what's going on and um, Ident, yeah. yeah, I hate <laughs> nothing worse. I hate I dance so much <laughs> because That's it's so just awkward. not like it's just not what you're like. It's just not your personality coming through. It's it feels so contrived, and when you're in the room, you're in the room, and whatever happens happens. But yeah, when you're like doing a video of like recently, I was doing this, and it's really fun. It's yeah, it's hard. It's not. It's not a conversation. It's no. moments are actually conversations, and you just no matter what we do with this virtual world, we can't we can't recreate that. So I think you know again off the point it was just kind of you know follow all the instructions because casting directors do work in different ways and they sometimes do prefer certain things so make sure you kind of you know always always taking note um one thing it's it's quite a random thing to say um but i have seen people um sometimes not stumble over words but like get the wrong uh, line or something my piece of advice is always just to go through to the end of that self-tape because I've seen some remarkable self-tapes which and the actor's been like oh no I can't send that because I messed up a line or I, I stumbled slightly and actually it's by far the best performance because actually they're in the moment they're, they're, they're acting and in life as we're talking now I'll stumble over my words I might not get every single word in the right way especially as a little bit of dyslexia so sometimes that does happen but sometimes just keep going to the end because I have seen a few times when people have sent over self tapes um and I've been like that's your best take because you are in the moment and it's it's really authentic so just just something I'll throw out there um because I used to do a lot of self tapes um because i was an agent with young performers so i did a lot of kind of directing and helping and um, the kids which obviously is a different thing because they're not very <laughs> not versed in self tapes um as, as you guys are as actors but um you know it was just something really interesting that i always noticed and again what you were saying about kind of sending a couple of takes um casting directors tend to prefer unless as you were saying you know like only with a different accent only one take if that's what they've specifically asked whereas if you do have an agent that's the kind of time to maybe try it out with them if you've got two there and you say I'm not really sure I've done these two they're kind of slightly different would you let me know which one you know you think's best or which one you're going to send on to the casting director that's the kind of feedback we get is that if you want to send more it tends to be more to your agent the casting director just send what you've been asked to send unless you know you've got that kind of as you're saying like that accent or something that really you're like just want to really just steer it in the direction just to see but um only do that with a real specific intention i would say definitely and i think it, that could even create an opportunity for your agent to really back you as well you know like i know you only asked for one but i really feel like she you know shows more in this as well so maybe do have a look because they'll probably they might listen to the agent 
And sometimes agents do keep the self tapes potentially if they're talking about you with a casting director or want to kind of obviously it's not embargoed or anything if you've done a specific tape and they think oh this is really interesting they can sometimes forward it on or talk to the casting other casting directors about something so it's you know it's always worthwhile them seeing you doing contrasting um like pieces and, and stuff because then they're like okay interesting let's see if we can point them in this direction or I know someone to specifically cast this who that you'll be really good with so you know it's really good for them to see definitely and um, so we're kind of halfway through so I'm going to show another of um, our videos that we have um, with the creative community initiative he gives us his two cents on his self-taping advice Hi Irish Film London, my name is Trevor Cainswine, I'm an actor writer based in London and County Cavan in Ireland. So, prepping for self-tapes. I love self-tapes, uh, give you a chance to play. I think, in general, the first thing I do is I record the opposite person's lines in the scene. So I've got them and leave a space for my lines. That way, when I'm memorising, I've got somebody to bounce off in my audio recording. With regards to memorising itself, I use the method I was taught in uh, acting school, which was to break the line down into five or six pieces. For example, if the line was, I went to the shop, I would break it down and it would be, I, I went, I went to, I went to their, I went to their shop. For everything, I know, but it works for me. It might not work for all of you. And if that doesn't work either, I will write the line down five times. Um, and that kind of makes it go into my head. And around a third of the way through, I'll press play on my recording and try and answer it back and make sure it's all going in. Um, with regards to sound, try and make sure you're in a room that isn't too echoey and the sound is nice and clear. If your mic is broken on your phone and you haven't got enough for a new phone, you can get a cheap uh, lavalier mic attachment for your phone, which will then work as a new mic. And that way you can bypass that if that's an issue. With regards to the breakdown of the scene as a whole, make sure you're actually actively listening. Don't uh, rehearse doing it one way, uh, play it a number of different ways, play around with it so you've got multiple ways. At the end of the day, uh, directors want to see that you can be directed and not stuck in one way of doing it. So um, if you have an objective or it's a moving objective, just make sure that you're fully listening and you're responding. Eye line, very important. I look here, which is just off to the right. I've got a photo stuck exactly where I'm looking right now and it's a literally just a regular picture from a magazine I tore out uh, but the person's got big eyes in it so I've got an eye line so I can look between the two eyes and I'm focused on something rather than um, coming back to a position I'm not really sure where I was looking the first time and that's really important um, for me anyway again personal preference but yeah choose your eye line and stick to it um, if you can stick your photo up again brilliant um, but if not, just just make sure you know exactly where your eye line is. That is it. And the piece I chose to show you, just so you can see what it looks like here, is a piece from BBC's Informer. I hope you enjoy it. Brilliant. So you'll have to tune in to have a look at his piece. Um, but once again, like Trevor gave us even more kind of scope as well. And one thing that can be a bit of an issue for actors doing self-tapes are readers and um, family and friends so we adore them sometimes you know it can just be <laughs> the most awful experience either you know they're talking too low or too loud or uh, they also attempt the accent um, you know, which can be uh, awful. This is all from personal experience. And um, I know that Trevor in his scene that he um, shows us, um, he has recorded himself on his phone um, and has left the gaps, um, which is very impressive, um, has left the gaps in between his lines. Um, but is there any, Tony or Aola, do you have any kind of tips for that for, tips for readers uh, who might be actors or like that. I know there's also apps that are available as well that you can record lines to feedback and stuff. Um, I, I, so I do, if I can't find anyone, I, I do record my lines and, and leave the space um, to go in between. But I, I guess for, for someone else reading in just to be, I don't know, like the right kind of neutral, I suppose. Like, I think some people can get really into acting with you, um, which isn't always that helpful. Um, 
but equally if someone's like very 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 like deadpan um I think that can also be a little bit jarring so like I think yeah neutral and a kind of nice soft spoken um yeah soft spoken way but um I think I think if you can find a few people that you're comfortable to read with I think that's um for me I find I find helpful and particularly with with uh, the pandemic and doing things online you can do that through zoom and so that person can can, you know can be anywhere which is really helpful in that sense if there isn't anyone in your house that you feel comfortable doing it with um yeah I mean like obviously that's not always possible as well I think so sometimes you have to be prepared to just use who you've got and and just jump in and go with it but I think if you're if you're if you're prepared and if you're comfortable with the scene and what you're doing then um you should yeah you should be able to to get through it I think yeah it's funny one of my first experiences of cell tapes was years ago and I was working on um on set of the film and one of the actors asked me to help him the self tape and we were we were actually in vietnam so it was i think the self tape was just out of desperation it was like way this was 2013 so this was like way before self tapes had become the regular and i was 18 and i remember his agent had sent it through and i remember being like okay if i do really good maybe she'll be like who's the person on the other side of the camera do I want to sign her and I was just like okay this is my moment I was doing like long pauses I was just like giving it my all behind and um Mark who's a lovely very talented actor and so kind and older than me was just very patient with me and I think he was like we're just gonna do it a different way just throw it away it doesn't matter um and I always remember that when I'm doing tapes with pals because I know that sometimes especially if you haven't got to act in ages, you're like, oh great, this will be fun. And even reading it, you're like, this is fun. I'm in a privileged enough position, pros and cons to dating actors, but one pro is self-tapes. Um, yes, definitely. So that's been something that I've, I've got to uh, have. I so yeah. The, yeah, I think the three of us are, are the same with that, but I, mm-hmm. I'm, Tony, I'm still guilty of that. Anytime um, uh, Sean gets a self-tape, I'm like, this is, this is, this is it. I'm gonna, you know. but like what it is, it's just another chance to play. I nearly enjoy it just as much as, as him, you know, kind of. Exactly, exactly. You enjoy it more yeah. as well, because you're like, I can really go and go there and be so much more fun. I, it's actually really, another good tip for actors is to do tapes with other actors and be on the other side of the camera and see how they work and what they throw away and what they don't. and. And then bring that fun and lightness to your own because it mm. is another opportunity to play and 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 just you know express yourself. Definitely, I think I think a, a thing that I've heard a lot from casting directors, and I know this is going to sound quite silly, but they really aren't listening to the reader. They're watching you, and they're watching and they're your reactions. So I mean, because I had parents in the past who were, as you say, Oscar worthy performances, and I was thinking bless these children like you know like they don't stand a chance against their parent who's who's reading opposite them um and I did ask a few times and they were like honestly Mel we're so tuned in to just watching what's on the tape like we just don't even hit because we're normally the readers we're just not listening to the reader it's fine just don't worry about it we're watching the the child's performance and what they're doing so I think that is just so crucial to remember because I know sometimes there's Uh, people have said about you know having uh, to record lines and then speak between and and if that's what you have to do because you don't have anyone else there who can read the lines then that's what you've got to do but don't worry about it because they're not focusing on that they're focusing on your acting and what you're doing and especially I think you know what we just heard in that video reactions as well I know that you're probably just you know laughing and thinking of course but it's amazing how many times I'll see people self tapes or um we do career advice sessions and I sometimes critique them and it's because I can see what's coming next I can see their their eyes I can see it in their eyes I can see it in their mind they already know what's about to happen I'm like but you don't do you because you don't know what the person's gonna say next and they're like 
oh yeah <laughs> you know and I think sometimes they just forget that um so just yeah just a little thing but readers you know don't worry about it too much um it's all about it's all about you guys <laughs> yeah, that's actually that is really nice to know because it is that kind of subconscious pressure of you know you're thinking about them and or or how the the recording is or whatever but and really it's just about you remember to tune back in to yourself the ifl podcast is completely independent so i would ask if you're enjoying yourself or you enjoy visiting our website and checking out the films we put up for you guys to consider making a donation or even becoming a member if money is tight at the moment even just spreading the word about us would be really wonderful like subscribe reshare you know the spiel just before I hand you back over, we'd like to thank Culture Ireland and the Irish Emigrant Support Programme for their ongoing support of our work, including this podcast series. Mel, a question I did want to ask was, um, from your point of view, about kind of just presentation. So in, in a sense of maybe clothes or dressing as the, as the character, or um, is there ever is there ever too much can you ever do too much or too little you know or is is that a you know what's kind of the- yeah I mean this is a question we get a lot as well as like you know do I need to to be in character you know if I'm being auditioning for the Tudors do I need to be in full get up do I need to go to hire a costume and and obviously you know the, the essence is you are going to be doing a role, a role, you know, which is like a lawyer or a business, but, you know, stereotypical role, you can, you know, wear those things that make you feel a bit more like that role. So if you want to wear a suit, if it's like those kind of things that would lend itself to the character, but you only need to give a nod to it because casting directors are looking at you as a blank canvas. Their job is to add on the details. They can change your hair colour, you know, you can even put contacts in with eye, like different eye colour, you know, at the end of the day, they want the performance they aren't really worried about the aesthetics like that is something that they will you know the director the cast you know the um costume designers everyone will work to bring that character to life they want the soul of the character there so you can do a little nod but there's no need to overthink it but i would say one thing that we do hear a lot and um, again it's about the background of the self-tape you know and I have seen people you know again in houses and stuff you know all over the place but try and keep a blank wall as much as possible because again you just want the focus on you and as much as you know we say we don't if you're looking at someone's you know we all have done it with you know when we've been watching the news and people have been talking and you're going God, it's on that bookshelf that's really interesting what's that what are they reading who's that oh my god is that like a vase like and without meaning to you're not watching them or listening to what they're saying you're kind of subconsciously just going I've got that book oh that's interesting and it just if you just don't distract the casting director give them everything give them that blank wall so they have no excuse but to look at you and look at your performance because it's just natural as humans to sometimes just your minds wander off and kind of look at other things um, and I think that's also true again of kind of um, any kind of action in it as well you can maybe have a cup of tea or something if that's what the you know the instructions have but don't forget the casting directors have chosen these sides so they know you know they'll try and do things where there is kind of minimal movement as possible but if there is movement they've probably talked you through it in the instructions that they've sent you about how much they want you to do or not do so again just be led by them but um yeah just keep coming back to the same point it is all about you and just make sure there is nothing that can take their attention away from that (laughs) I think that's a really important thing to come away from today that like there is so much to distract you and to take away your focus and to just really remember especially just before you know just take a breath and remember for you and this is what you love doing as well and like you know sometimes auditions and self tapes can be so few and far between you know you could get loads one month and then just get none for ages so when you do get them you know definitely take advantage of them and enjoy them and um, mm-hmm. what we do and um, so mel do you uh, guys also i th- i don't think our chat box is working so um if you do have a question i think there's an option to raise your hand and i can unmute you and um, if anyone does um but i just wanted to say I wanted to ask Mel as well, like, do you have any kind of overall encouraging 
words of wisdom or tips about actors who have struggled you know over the last year it's been really difficult for for all creatives and um, but definitely actors i think as well just that uncertainty and um yeah do you have any kind of words of wisdom or advice? yeah i think you know there's there's not you know what can i say apart from we do like theater has disappeared and we are fully aware of that and we are trying our best to kind of you know think about the longer terms of roles and stuff moving forward which we are pleasantly surprised to see how strong especially television is looking at the moment I think because we have been um you know people are aware that through this whole year the things that people have done to are uh, television Netflix Amazon all those kind of things and um, so we are really pleased to see that money seems to be really been putting into that side of the industry and film also is starting to kind of come back up but I would say TV is definitely the one that's running ahead far more than anything else um, and in terms of the stage and things I think what's interesting is that there has still been ways that people have put on interactive performances whether it be virtual or finding a way to still be and I think what we are all kind of positive about here at Spotlight is that things we've noticed since the first lockdown, that was uh, so much quieter. But since that point, since kind of June time, roles have been ticking in, the industry is ticking over. And yes, we aren't sure exactly what will happen, but the main thing is things are happening, people are working, the industry has got back on its feet stage side stuff will also come back um so to remain positive and to kind of know that that will happen and I think that's what we're all kind of just you know trying to to kind of keep in mind is that it has been incredibly difficult but we didn't know you know from where it's been in like this time last year to where it is now things are continuing to to make progress and I think that's important to say um it spotlights you know we are kind of very aware we've got a whole section we're doing a lot of webinars and we're doing a lot of kind of um ones to do with well-being there's a big section on there to kind of go through so if things are feeling overwhelming you know there are things you can take a look at and kind of resources there and some great podcasts and stuff that also on that topic so i think to know that we're all in the same boat and um, there's even these called kind of actor circles which one of my colleagues b has set up and one of these is to come together as a small community and talk about things and talk about how things are and how you're feeling and things so you know it's a really I mean, we've noticed from holding them really positive um ways because the way we can comfort each other is by being there for each other so um that's been a really um positive thing to come from it but um i'm an optimist that's what one of my skills that comes out in all the tests that we do at spotlight and i'm just convinced that once whenever that is and there will be a time when we're through it it's our industry is just going to boom like we've never seen it before like I don't know if anyone will want to stay in overnight. I feel like everyone will be, and not just the West End or Broadway, fringe, comedy, live performance. Like, that's what we're missing. That's what I'm missing in my life. And I know a lot of people are. And so that, I think, that side will boom as and when we are able to do it. It will happen 100%. Absolutely. Oh my God. Try, try and keep us in, try and keep us in when we, when we can get out. And one thing that I think is, is really encouraging to know as well, as you were saying, you know, definitely TV is, is coming back around. Um, and like that, you just, we ha you have to adapt and develop. Um, and I know Aola, you are starring in our, um, national broadcaster here in Ireland, Ortiz, new TV drama, Smother, um, which was trending on Twitter yesterday. And, um, but you started um, filming that pre-COVID and then you guys had to pick back up again, right? So, I mean, that in itself, and it's on TV now, so that in itself is amazing. That, and it's an incredible drama. I would highly recommend people to have a look at it. I'm only one episode in and I'm already like, I can't wait. But that's an amazing achievement in itself that you know that you guys did it. So it's so, it's so possible and doable. So how was that kind of transition between pre and, and post? Yeah, I mean, it was it was incredible that I that I think there was just such a determination straight away to to get it finished and to get back as soon as we could. Um, 
which I, you know, I really admire our producers and everyone involved for that because they really kept it positive and looking forward and just like, you know, we will get through this. But um, yeah, we started in February. I started in February and started. And so we were like a week off finishing block one, I think, when we stopped. Um, so I think having that kind of like midway point as well, almost there was was spurring. I think if we had just started, it might have been like a little bit different. Um, but yeah, starting up again, like six or seven months later, um, was very <laughs> surreal, I think, in, in many ways and having such a huge break. Um, and then obviously when we all came back, it was in a bubble and we were all, um, we were all kind of all together all the time, but also in our own little pods and you know just coming in to film and then going back to our homes and stuff but I think yeah there was just such a there was just such a group effort and there was such a like spirit of like let's do this and you know whatever we need to do we will do I think we only had what we had one brush with with COVID itself um and that was dealt with so swiftly and so just like yeah I think I think the way that everyone was able to come together with this um you know one goal to to get this thing made really was very special in the end and like you know it must have been very stressful for everyone um up top involved and like financing and everything but they never let that overshadow everything or kind of let the the panic of the situation um come in which i really admire everyone for yeah Amazing. Well, it's great. It's uh, I think it's a really just lovely example at the moment as well to show, you know, it is possible, which is lovely because uh, for ages it just felt so far away. Um, yeah. And I know, Tony, you're also working on something at the moment, which is fabulous as well. So also really nice and encouraging to know that both of you guys are still working away and, you know, aren't uh, kind of. And also, I think as well, there's something to be said for for the the for the last year, I think as well, it's really encouraged people to start making their own work. And, um, you know, because sometimes you can't always wait around for something to come along. And like that now, what you were saying with, you know, you guys always wanting to develop the website and all that kind of stuff. And now you had the time to do it. And um, I think we'll, we'll also see a rise in kind of, you know, just people creating their own stuff and shooting their own stuff mm -hmm. or, or their own plays and that kind of stuff, which I'm very excited for. And I think Neve, just what you were saying there and Mel mentioned it is to just remember the abundance that there is of work and that we are all attracting that and to stay positive as Mel said and and work is coming back and in a you know like I go into quarantine on Thursday for 10 days for work and then it's just it's a mad kind of time we have to all adjust and adapt and so it's it's been kind of a for anyone who's hoping and looking forward to when work does come back to also remember that you can come back post 2020 it's it you don't have to go back to who you were the kind of actor you did things are so different now you know you're getting tested on set all the time you've got a covid coordinator bubbles it's it is scary but we're all in it together so to allow this to be a reset and to allow it to just to come as you are and whatever that may be because as Mel has stated there are resources there to help us so not to be overwhelmed because even sometimes I think the idea like I know the idea of going back to work for me was like oh yeah okay I'm an actor I completely forgot about that like I still am terrified to be in front of that camera day one of shooting I'm gonna be like I have no idea what I'm doing sorry I'm smoking in a tense this <laughs> Um, very bad smoking acting but um yeah so just just a note of of to stay stay grounded and and I think the overall message from this chat is just to come as you are and do it definitely properly. absolutely on set mm -hmm. and on set in your living room doing yeah. your self tapes um I think there you we've taken off the kind of everyone on mute so if anyone did have any questions you can unmute yourself and and ask the way um, but I do feel like, you know, we've really covered a lot. Um, I, I also kind of on that same vein, um, uh, do everyone check out Aola on Smother. You can get it on the RTE 
a web player. And also, you can also check out Tony O'Rourke in the BAFTA nominated camera courses. Um, so this was such a great and encouraging chat, I have to say. Thank you, uh, all of you, for, for coming to, uh, to listen to us chat. And thank you for coming to chat to us, ladies. Um, I do want to say that we have two more events after this one today. Um, today at three o'clock, we have Make Film History, Unlocking the Potential of Film Archives. Um, so the Make Film History project is making um, film archives available from the BBC, the BFI, the IFI, Northern Ireland Screen and London Community Video Archive for educational use by, for young filmmakers. Um, so that's usually completely impossible to get your hands on any sort of kind of film archive. So that's a really cool opportunity. And then with kind of the same vein with what we were talking about then, finishing off our festival on Tuesday at five, we have Filmmakers Mental Health Check-In. And um, I know we touched on a few bits of, of it today, but definitely tune into that as we're doing it in collaboration with Jessica Levick, I hope I'm saying her name right, from Raising Films, which offers support to parents and carers. And then we have Lucy Pell from Film and TV Charity, which offers support to film and TV workers, and they commission research into issues affecting them. And then lastly, we have Jude Spencer, who runs Dolly Mental Health, and they do first aid courses and related training for creative teams. So that will be a really great chat to kind of wrap things up uh, especially in the time that we're in. And then lastly, our last feature film of the festival is this evening at 8 p.m. That's The Winter Lake, which is also followed by a Q&A with the director and writer. Um, and also make sure to keep an eye out for those creative community uh, videos that you will see. Uh, we have Aoife Hines, we have Dermot Murtaugh, Connor McNeil, which you saw, Trevor Kane Warren also, and then we also will have a video from Ayala Smart. Um, so I'll just double check again in case anybody has any anything they want to say. I'd like to jump in with a question, if that's okay. Um, hi everyone, my name's Jerry. I'm from Irish Film London as well. Um, thanks everyone for for um, for joining us and for the great chat. I think I wanted to pick up on something that um, that Mel said a little bit, um, but I, I am sure that it's, an, it's like an experience that everyone has, and it's kind of about like dealing with um, with dealing with rejection or dealing with um, failure, I suppose, because you know on the one hand, obviously, like not getting the role is going to happen, and you know, failing and getting it wrong is part of the creative process, but it, you know, it can hurt. So, you know, I wondered what, um, I wondered what Mel, whether Mel, you had any specific advice and then, um, Iola and Tony, whether you, whether you have any particular ways of dealing with knockbacks, especially from roles to where you do, you know, you sink your teeth into it and you really do put your effort into it like that. I think, you know, um, I don't obviously it's a different perspective of being on the other side of it, obviously, as actors. Um, but I think in terms of when you don't get the role, um, I know, obviously, at Spotlight, there is a lot of talk around the Yes, No campaign, which is something that we are still very aware of. Um, and I think one of our initiatives is to really try. I mean, we have a professionals team which work with casting directors and agents, but obviously with casting directors, we are working away to kind of be able to get that message across if you haven't got that role, because we do feel that's so important for people to know um, before a cast list is given, the amount of times people say they see on Twitter that that's the way they get told. And that's, you know, not helpful in any way when it comes to, you know, we have been in rejection. So um, that is something that we're still very, very aware of and casting directors have got better and they have been better at communicating with agents, but then sometimes that doesn't filter down. So there's still not always the communication that we would like over um, if you have been unsuccessful. I think a key thing is in terms of, you know, when it doesn't go your way, um, the small things that can change, you know, why it has gone to someone else. And actually a lot of time, and it's gonna sound so frustrating, it's not even to do with ability. It can be the smallest of things, the dynamic of how a cast have come together, um, you know, and how you fit into that group of things. And it can be the smallest 
um, actual reason as to why you didn't get that role. And I think that's that is something just to bear in mind. It's not actually to do with your performance or especially if you've got down to the final few factors of what actually why it went a different way. You might never know. And I think the key thing is, is just to kind of, and again, I say it because it's so much easier said than done, but let it go and just go, that role wasn't for me, but there is something else for me. That casting director knows who I am. I've got down, you know, we say at Spotlight, to get an audition is incredible. To get a self-tape is incredible. Congratulate yourself on that. And then, you know, more will come. And I think that's just a really key thing to remember is that you have done incredible to get to that part of the journey and casting directors their job is to remember you and to bring you back for the next thing and they all talk you know they they know what they're doing they're they're always they're incredible they have eyes everywhere I genuinely don't know how they do it I don't know how they do their job but they you know want the best for you I think that's the key thing to remember is they want to cast you in those roles and they will be doing their best to to get you the role that suits you so that's that's my two pennies worth (laughs) <laughs> we'll just do an alphabetical. So okay. <laughs> um. Yeah. No. I. I. I completely agree. Um. With Mel, I think I just try to I do it and and let it go, and just you know I I'm a firm believer in um you know what happens and you get what you're meant to get and um I think you know sometimes obviously the odd one sticks out and it hurts a little bit more and I think that's okay and like you know it's it's also a space to let yourself have a little you know grieve over something particularly if you've poured your heart and soul into into a role um but yeah I think what you're meant to get you will get and as as Mel said there's so many reasons why something might not go your way and I think it can be very dangerous if you go into the narrative that it's you that's wrong and what you whether you're not good enough um not always easy but I think yeah try to just go in and let it go and I think the industry is so things change all the time like you know I actually I've just had to pull out of a job that um, I was in prep for for the last two months and that's been really devastating in in many ways but um, you know it was due to injury there's nothing I can do about it and I have to just believe that there was a reason for that and if I had something you know I might have hurt myself really badly or you know whatever um, so I think being able to just keep going because you know we're in a unique industry where we are getting rejected more than we are getting like accepted in in those terms like we're constantly going on job interviews um and yeah I think you just have to have a certain level where you you kind of just let it roll off your shoulders a little bit yeah yeah I echo what both the guys say absolutely and I think the only thing I need to add is you always need to remember first and foremost you're a human being not an actor it's not your identity so your self-worth shouldn't come from yeses or nos as important as they are and I agree we need to grieve them we need to let them go but we also need to believe what will be will be what's for you won't pass you mm-hmm. you're said than done but I think it's it all begins within and once you're steady as a rock and you have that foundation the rest is all noise and a bonus I think as well, like with, with the pandemic, it, it really kind of forced us into, you know, thinking, who am I without it? You know, and, and that's what, what, what needs to be first and foremost. You know, you need to be grounded in that first before you can uh, go and do anything else. So in a way, pros, pros from, from, the, from the pandemic. But um, yeah, and definitely look after ourselves. I was saying to Aola during during the week that, uh, you know, I think we're all very resilient, but there's, mm-hmm. you know, actors are, we're, we're a certain breed of, uh, of resilience for sure. So um, it's definitely something to commend. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, thank you so much, girls and ladies, for coming on and chatting to us today. And thank you so much, Mal, for giving us the, the industry inside as well. I think that's always important to hear. Sometimes, uh, you know, us actors can kind of uh, flood the noise a little bit. So it's always nice to have uh, the other side as well. No worries. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, everyone. Definitely do 
keep in touch with us and uh, everything that we we have in store for you guys um, and I hope everyone has a happy St. Patrick's Day I don't even yeah. know what that looks like because we can't go to the pub but we'll find a way <laughs> to celebrate um, and thank you so much for joining us today really 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 appreciate it so thank you and hope thanks you everyone Yeah. Thank thanks, thanks very much Cheers. for joining Cheers. Bye. bye guys bye And that's it from us here today. Thank you so much for listening. To any inspiring actors listening, we hope that this gave you some useful insight and encouragement to keep going in such a tough industry. Thank you so much again to Mal Brown, Aola Smart and Tony O'Rourke for coming on to chat to us. Don't forget to follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. If you visit our YouTube channel, you can check out some of the other actors' advice on self-taping. And while you're at it, definitely also check out our current summer film programme that we have for you on our website in the Irish Film From Home section where you can watch some amazing shorts and documentaries all from the comfort of your own home. A final thank you to the Irish Emigrant Support Programme and Culture Ireland who've been brilliant supporters of our work, Gurmila Mahaguth. The Irish Film London podcast is produced by me, Neve Brannigan, and our theme music is by Kevin MacLeod.